Hi everybody, this is Ashley with DAV. I am so pleased to be joined today by DAV Assistant Legislative Director Marky Barefield. Marky, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Ashley. Thank you. And this is a wonderful day in DAV uh, for the things that we're going to discuss today. Yeah, so Mark Key, um, he's, he's one of our uh, legislative folks here in D.C., and one of his portfolios that he handles as far as advocacy is concerned is suicide prevention. So something, you know, we're all very clearly, um, you know, interested in. We're trying to make sure we're doing everything we can to bolster those suicide prevention efforts. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about veteran suicide prevention today and some of the legislation to address it. Um, including some kind of big news from over the weekend. So, Marquis, can you tell me about the two bills that the president signed into law over the weekend? It's, you know, we'll go ahead and start with the uh, Commander John Scott Hannon Veterans, Veterans Mental Health Care Improvement Act, kind of a mouthful, but, but packed with um, some really important stuff. I know there's some important provisions in there for improving access to mental health care, um, for opening the doors in how we treat mental health conditions, as well as, you um, transitioning from military to civilian life. So can you can you talk a little bit about that and, and touch on some of those finer points for me? Uh, yes, I can. As uh, most of us are well aware, um, 20 veterans die by suicide a day. And of those 20, about 14 do not have direct access to VA care or VA treatment. Uh, one of the big things that happened this weekend was the president signed into law uh, Senate Bill 785, the Commander John Scott Hannon uh, Mental Health Care and Suicide Prevention Act. And there are six major points that bolster this particular piece of legislation. Uh, one of them is VA's mental health workforce to serve more veterans by offering scholarships to mental health professionals uh, to work at VA centers or vet centers and placing at least one suicide prevention coordinator at every VA medical center. Um, some other key points from that bill are improving rural veterans access uh, to mental health care as well, along with uh, implementing a pilot program to provide veterans to access to complementary and interrogative health care programs through animal therapy, uh, sports and recreation therapy, uh, and therapy and other art therapy and post-traumatic growth therapy. Um, it also establishes a grant program that requires the VA to better collaborate, excuse me, uh, with community organizations across the country uh, that serve veterans. So it opens the door for community care networks to be um, available when a veteran is having a mental health crisis and they can't get specifically to either a VA medical center or a clinic. They can get to a place out in their local communities to get the care and assistance that they need. Um, and it also holds the VA accountable for its mental health care and suicide prevention efforts by examining how the Department of Veterans Affairs manages suicide prevention resources at their various facilities across the country. Yeah, I mean, it, it really is a very uh, comprehensive piece. I mean, there's so much involved there. Um, clearly, we know that you know VA is a great place for veterans um, on the whole, the, the quality of care there is, you know, proven. It's, it's study after study has shown that it's, it's very good, very high quality. Um, but we have seen that the, the issue, of course, is actually getting access to that and getting people in the door. Um, so making sure that we're meeting veterans where they are in the community, that no matter where they are, if they're in crisis, we're able to get them help. That's very important. Yes, okay. it is very important because um, a lot, like I said, you know, a lot of veterans who have thought about it, uh, who have thought about or have mental health issues or have concerns with suicide, you know, we're trying to make sure, or the VA is trying to make sure that there are ways that they can get back into the VA healthcare system. Uh, as you indicated earlier, we understand that the VA is the leader in mental health care for veterans, and we want to make sure that they know and understand that, hey, if there is an issue, please, by all means, go to your local VA talk with your primary care physician or go to your community-based outpatient clinic or vet center, whatever is most uh, easier or prevalent for you to get to, make sure that you take advantage of your VA benefits and know that they are there to help you. And, and the next thing we'll talk about actually kind of, kind of plays into that as well. It's making sure that, again, no matter where you are, 
um, help is available to you. And, and I think the important thing too, that we talk about this community prevention effort is making sure that everyone knows and understands where to send a veteran who's in crisis. Um, so the National Suicide Hotline Designation Act. Tell me a little bit about what that does and what does the timeline look like for implementation um, of that? Um, the National Suicide uh, Hotline Prevention Act um, will designate the numbers 988 in an emergency situation for mental health or suicide prevention crisis. And this designation was signed into law on Saturday as well. And this piece of legislation will designate the numbers 988, just like 911 for any type of emergency. But this one's for specifically mental health or suicide uh, prevention. So instead of having to remember the former number, uh, the long 10 digit 1-800 number, this particular piece of legislation will allow a person or a veteran to be able to just call 988 and specify once you call those digits that um, if you push the option one, you'll be connected with a veteran's crisis counselor and they will intervene and take it from there. Uh, the piece of legislation that was signed into law on Saturday should be implemented over the next two years. So by 2022, 988 will be the new designated number to call if you know someone or if you are a veteran that is having a mental health or suicide prevention crisis, you can call that number and help and assistance will be with you just like with dialing 911. That's excellent. excellent. Um, now, Mark, do you have some legislation that DAV has supported um, regarding lethal means safety training, the Lethal Means Safety Training Act, actually. Um, and, and this would effectively create touch points within VA to ensure that, that anyone who's interacting with a veteran at the VA is able to have um, these important and potentially life-saving conversations about lethal means safe storage and suicide prevention. So can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, this particular piece of legislation is HR 8084, the Lethal Means Safety Training Act. And yes, we support this particular act because when a veteran goes into the VA, um, everyone who they come in contact with has the potential to make sure that this veteran is okay or that this veteran is acting um, in a normal manner. Whether it's your primary care physician, mental health specialist, uh, the person you see at the pharmacy or at the lab, it doesn't matter who you come in contact with. But the VA um, or this piece of legislation is trying to ensure that no matter whom a veteran comes in contact with, that if conversations are had about weapons or any type of lethal means, uh, doesn't necessarily have to be weapons. It could be uh, over-the-counter drugs that you receive from the pharmacy at the VA, uh, whether it be your opioids or other types of medications. Um, this piece of legislation is just making sure that the VA employees have conversations or, or kind of gives them a, an, an open door for them to have conversations with veterans to make sure that, hey, you're doing the right things with your medications you have your weapons stored in a safe manner, in a safe place, and that they're either locked or stored properly. That things are away from either yourself or from people who they could cause harm to do. So this piece of legislation is something that uh, we support as well. Yeah, I mean, that conversation has been growing. It's, it's ever more so important. We're talking about the idea of lethal means safety is that creating of, of time and space between a person's impulse to take their own life or, or do harm to themselves and the actual action of doing it. So like you said, just making sure that they have a plan in place, if, it, if it's involving prescription medication, if it's involving firearms, whatever the, whatever the case is, um, that they have a plan that, that you know, someone is able to bring that up with a veteran and ensure that um, in crisis, that's um, uh, not a, a, a factor that's going to play into it, that they're able to kind of mitigate that risk. So very right. important. Um, Mark, I want to thank you for, for taking the time again to discuss this really important issue. Um, some great legislation um, that, that will hopefully you know, help us battle against veteran suicide um, as we move forward. You can be sure to go to um, DAVCAN.org. It's the DAV Commanders Action Network. You can see the legislation that is backed by uh, DAV, including 
a number of bills that, that you can help us take action on to address this crucial issue of veterans' mental health care and suicide prevention. So again, thank you, Marquis, um, for a great conversation. Please be sure to check out DAVCAN.org, learn a little bit more about how you um, can take action with us. Thanks so much. Thank you, Ashley. Really appreciate the conversation this morning.